Last night, I committed an atrocity. During a very boring university class of small business finance, I found myself on the computer in the back of the class and I started a rapid game. Sue me and sorry mom for when you watch this video. The game lasted for an unexpected 84 moves. So here are all the blunders that I was doing while I was listening to the teacher and multitasking down on my computer. I have the white pieces here against a 2200 and here's how it went. You can see the game review 83.2. Um, that's, that's an overstatement. It's, it's, it wasn't that good. Five blunders, seven mistakes, three inaccuracies. It was a medium game, but let's learn from these mistakes and hopefully make this instructive and insightful at the same time. So here I played E4 of choice. Uh, and so after bishop c4, we go into my classic Italian, bishop e7, the Hungarian defense. I actually play this myself with the black pieces. d4, open up the center. And here I was looking to initiate a little gambit, maybe a play on the Danish gambit, kind of with one move later here on knight f3. This would just make me go queen b3 here, I believe, and I would be attacking this front. My opponent plays d3, kind of disrupting my plans of them taking and then me taking back, and so I play castles. They play d6, takes and develop, threatening to castle next move, and I do bishop f4. Castles, h3, preventing some bishop g4 things. Bishop e6, and now we go knight d2, preparing to take back this bishop threatened with a knight. And after h6, we go bit rook e1. Trying to maybe open up things here. What I'm trying to do is I'm putting my rooks on the semi-open files and open files uh, to potentially make a breakthrough with the pawn on e5. Queen d7, and now we go rook d1. Rook e8, and now queen f1. This was a weird move. Um, I didn't... I wanted to remove my queen from the d-file so that e5 could be a little bit more juicy. The engine thinks that e5 here is a little bit better. Queen f1, bishop f8. This is a mistake. I don't know why. The engine thinks taking on the bishop here is better. e5, this is my breakthrough. If they take with the d-pawn, I get some discoveries here, and I can take on f6, on f6, open up the position on the queen. That's what we want. Takes, and now I take here with the knight. I'm just looking, knight d4 is not that good. No, just queen e7 and now the queen defends this knight and I cannot double these pawns. So I took here on e5 and now bishop takes, threatening to double these pawns at once. Bishop takes c4, now we go knight takes and now queen here. This is very symmetrical. Uh, it's not very, very interesting of a type of game. As you can see, the pawn structures are pretty symmetrical, which means that there's no imbalances in the position and pawns will not be the deciding factor of this game whatsoever. Rook e3, little rook lift trying to target this king here on the g file. b6 was an odd move. I think they're trying to support bishop c5, but I'm not sure. Queen d3 and now bishop e7. Queen f5. This is clearly me taking notes while the teacher was talking and seeing on my screen bishop e7 and then just going for a flat out queen f5, which is a huge mistake. As you saw, the eval bar drops a knight right away and they missed it. They were probably also in class in the Philippines, which is understandable, I guess. Rook takes d8, rook takes d8, and now I have bishop d4. Now you can't, well, it's not advisable to take because rook takes is so much better. Let's just do a little variation. Rook takes here. And now this knight is so targeted. And behind the knight, we have some threats on f7, which are also nice. Uh, I know that this queen is defending, but maybe there's some b3 things, okay? Here, bishop c5. A mistake, says the computer, because I can double and isolate black's pawns for the end game here. And this is what I should have played. Now, I'm not that smart. I go knight e5, attacking the queen. Queen goes there. And I go rook g3, threatening this knight here. Bishop takes. I cannot take on f6 because I just think just bishop takes e5. And even if takes, king f8. And this is better because there is a beautiful skewer here and white loses. So I take back queen e6 and now queen f4 and here and here it's just a little threats here and there. I don't have many pieces, not much of an attack. But then after knight h5, again, just 
cards on the table. I completely missed knight, at, knight h5, and I was very scared here for a moment. My pieces are forked, but can you find the single resource that gets you out of this mess? And it is, and when I saw this move, I was in heaven because it's saving me and it's kind of putting me on the edge of an advantage here. We go queen h4, and now we sneak peek onto that rook and you don't really want to take this rook on g3. I just take with check, king up, and then this Vishenzug works, and we remain a piece up in this position. So the knight has to go back. This is a rebuttal fork. And so the knight goes back to cover the rook here. In doing so, it masks the queen's defense of h6, and we take here knight e8 proposing a trade of queens. The computer, again, likes me to trade queens, but I declined. I like my attack here. Rook d5, h4. And this is where I fumble a bit the bag. Uh, okay, h4 is not the best move. Maybe just rook e3, consolidation. The engine really wants me to dilute into an endgame here, which is fair, but I didn't really like it since I had an isolated pawn. Also, like, kind of kidding about that. I wasn't thinking that deeply of this position in the game. Again, I'm in class. So h4, c5, and I go knight g4 with some queen b8 things, um, maybe threatening this. We don't know really. I don't remember. I just remember it was a blunder because after this, I felt like it was kind of over. Queen b8, king h7, kind of a weird move. But you'll see from here on out, there's many mistakes on both parts. I don't do the biggest mistakes, which is kind of surprising given the gap between my opponent's rating and mine, uh, kind of like almost 100 points there, and the fact that I'm in class, I'm distracted. F3, big mistake by me. I kind of miss knight d6, says the engine, which is minus five, like a full rook up. I guess my king is just so exposed now that the black pieces will be coming in very, very soon with queen e1 check and rook d1, very fair. A5, and now I go a h5, just trying to get something. I know that my pieces are out of play. My queen is out of the board, and these pieces are not at all active. Very passive, in fact. My knight is completely drawed on all its squares, cannot progress, and this rook is basically trapped by my own pieces. What is that about? So knight f6 lets me trade. That was kind of a mistake. You don't really want to trade off my worst piece. That is taking cover of, of my rook, you know? Uh, so I go h6, and here, <laughs> here it's, a, it's kind of funny. I thought I won the queen with rook h3, it was kind of celebrating in class, but then there's rook h4, but then this is not that good because it loses a pawn here because the queen stops defending. And so now black has infinite checks, though I still think that I can muster up a draw here, even though black has, has so many checks, so much active play. And so king g7, here I propose a queen trade, and with low time, just again, look at the clock, I have 30 seconds to their four minutes. I want to note this down real quick. My opponent has four minutes here. They can take the time to win this endgame fair and square. And so the madness continues. King f6, just going for this c4 pawn, very good plan. So I try to go with f4, trying to take up this e5 square. And so king f5, the only winning move, king g3. King e4, this is played brilliantly, flawlessly till this day. And now king g4, and now this is the big mistake of the game. f6, trying to prevent this square when black is completely there first. d4, takes on c4, remove the king, and then just the pawn queens first. Trying to block me is like giving me some entry territory, and after I do a waiting move, which is the only drawing move here, king d4 and i go f5 and here i create an opening for my king to get in and so if they take then i get my king here and i'll take and just push my pawn and trust me the pawn's queen at the same exact time it's quite crazy so g5 king h5 and this is exactly what happened apparently and i go king g7 in a winning position again i do a mistake i should have gone queen, king g6 the reason is, once I queen, I want to be as close as possible to the enemy pawn to take it, and then I'll be a pawn up in a queen endgame, which is theoretically completely winning if you can save this pawn upon the queens being queened. C3, and now this is just a pawn race. Queen, 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 e3. Mind you, they have four minutes here. They can come up with, with queen, c7, winning a pawn. They just got really impatient. That's not on me. 
Queen f6, this is the drawing move. I guess this is winning because of g4, like just slightly winning, right? Plus one, queen f6, king d3, and now I go king g6. Mind you, 18 seconds left. I'm doing this on a touchpad, <laughs> on my trackpad, going very quickly with my thumbs and uh, with my fingers. So g4, and now I go queen f5. And once I saw this, I calculated this in like two seconds, saw I was winning, and literally did all pre-moves. I took super quick king g5, and here it is a Tugzuang in this position. The black pieces cannot save this pawn on g4. And so the king goes back to e4, and look at this, we just block, right? This is called shouldering in chess, is when you shoulder the other king from getting to the promotion square. I want to avoid the king to get to g8, because this optimizes black's chances of a draw. So I go king g6 here. And when they come back, this is when I take the time to push my pawn. And so here, again, just bringing my pawn down, and this is pretty much all pre-moved. Can I get there in time? Yes. And I checkmate with 3.7 seconds left, 84 move game, again, in class, while we're doing small accounting uh, for a business, uh, and in which we have a quiz next week, so I probably should go get to the books. Thank you so much for watching today's little game of the day, and I hope you enjoyed the analysis. If you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer in the comments. Have an amazing day. Love you all.